What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Good good Friday evening, April 16th, 2021. It's a date. 6.41 p.m. West Coast time here in California where it's cooking. Uh, beautiful Friday night. Uh, party night for some people out there. Not me. Not going to be uh, partying out here tonight. <laughs> a little bit past that stage, I think. Anyway, what do we got going on out here, folks? The latest earthquake on the globe, a 2.9 striking. Uh, up here in Alaska, this comes just right after a 5.0 struck over here in the Indonesia area. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up over on this side of the world, far western part of Indonesia. Uh, you can see here on this USGS map that uh, 5.0 in question there, still in the red circle. Uh, a depth of about 100 kilometers within the subduction zone right here. Uh, what's this here? This is kind of in an area where, ooh, Right about uh, where that big earthquake struck uh, well, quite a while ago, a big nine-pointer. In fact, I pulled up the uh, uh, historical seismic catalog here from the USGS, and you can see that 9.1 that struck uh, back in 2004 that created, of course, that massive tsunami there. I'm sure quite a few folks remember that. Uh, that was a pretty shallow earthquake, 30 kilometers, a little bit south, uh, a little bit closer to the, uh, the plate boundary of the Java Trench. But uh, at 5.0, just to the north there and a little bit on the deep side. So kind of watching that area for hot spot uh, or potentially larger movement. Uh, looking over the past 100 years or so, you can see this, this specific area has a uh, tremendous uh, amount of <laughs> plate tectonic, dy dynamic plate tectonics at work there. Uh, many sevens, many eights, and of course that 9.1 there, uh, 2004 Sumatra earthquake. I remember that one very, very well. Take a look at the uh, rest of the globe over here. You can see that movement uh, throughout the Indonesia area, also up here towards uh, Philippines, south of Philippines area, 4.5 and a 5.4, a little bit further south. Also uh, some movement uh, taking place around the Japan area, but overall no significant movement yet on this in this area of the plates. Still kind of waiting, folks. It's just a little, It's just I just don't think we're getting enough release of pressure up here i think it's going to be a bigger one once this thing does uh, kick off up here in the north uh, today some further movement along the kermadec trench area the tonga trench up here you can see some uh well some pretty deep earthquake returning pretty deep earthquakes returning to the fiji area 5.4 578 kilometers that's north east of the island there fiji uh, over the past couple days, few days or so, we've seen a return of uh, some some deeper movement. Okay, this is a 5.7, uh, 578 kilometers here to the south southeast. I was looking at this red circle here. That's another deep earthquake. Um, did that one just pop up? Maybe not, or maybe so. What's the timestamp on that? Zero zero forty six uh, potentially. Anyway, um, yeah, some deep movement going on, folks. I'm trying to get my marbles together in my head. Uh, a lot of uh, deep movement out here returning to the region, kind of getting uh, potentially back into the swing of uh, your typical plate tectonics out here, the dynamics of it. Uh, when we see, uh, you know, this area pretty active while the West Coast uh, gets, you know, sporadic uh, earthquake activity and your typical uh, creeping earthquakes along the, um, the San Andreas Fault. We'll see if this holds true. But uh, what do we got here? Oh, about five earthquakes or so. Three of them are really deep, really deep. Uh, as I mentioned, that 5.4, 578. This one up here, 400 kilometers. And this one, uh, let's see, where did it go? It's got to be this one, right? 397 kilometers. So three earthquakes there within the vicinity of the Fiji Islands area. Not uncommon. This area is super super famous if you were to draw like an x on the mark or x <laughs> x marks a spot when it comes to the most deep earthquake activity on the world in the world as far as plate dynamics and plate tectonics go this would be the area right here smack dab no doubt other areas of course we do see deep movement but uh on average this area here sees a uh, a bunch more than other areas of the world uh let's see here Let's go down to the uh, all magnitudes. We'll check out the movement up here in Alaska. Uh, just your uh, typical microquakes up here. North of the uh, plate boundary there, the Aleutian Trench, the Pacific Plate. 
into Northern California, looking at a little bit of movement there, not a whole bunch. Um, looking at some activity uh, took place there. Uh, Cascadia Mega Thrust, Cascadia Zone, right? Southern edge of it, about 20 kilometers or so below the surface. Uh, a little bit further movement up around the Bernie area. I wonder if some of this earthquake activity is within that 24 hour period there. 416, uh, 0945. Yeah, I think some of that stuff I may have potentially covered last night on the update video. So no new significant movement to the north. We are seeing a little migration of earthquake activity away from the geysers here along the coast range, northeast of Santa Rosa, uh, Arbuckle, Williams area. This is the Sacramento Valley just to the edge of it. Uh, of course, the coastal ranges are mountains, right, built up by plate tectonics. Uh, so it's not uncommon to see earthquake activity there, but it, we're kind of watching a little uh, migration um, away from that geyser activity. The only little small fault system I see there is the uh, Hunting Creek Berryessa fault system. Other than that, uh, normal geyser activity right there at the geysers. Uh, Reno kind of quieting down a little bit. Some further movement, microquake activity around Morgan Hill. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano quiet for now. That's this area right around here. The Long Valley Caldera pretty quiet. A little microquake there, 1.5 near Benton, and uh, some further movement over here in Nevada. Nothing significant to report there. Ridgecrest, ah uh, man, just still seeing that typical microquake activity that could continue for years to come, folks. Following that, uh, you know those back-to-back uh, -back earthquakes there in July 4th, July 5th time frame. Um, and Southern California looking pretty quiet. No significant swarming to report in the south part of the state. Washington still seeing some movement here at Mount Rainier area. Area, a couple small quakes right at the summit. We can go ahead and check that out real quick on the uh, Trimmer map here. We'll go over to the uh, volcanic seismicity map at uh, what am I doing here? I'm bouncing back and forth. Mount Rainier. You can see, yeah, you can actually see those little spikes there or little uh, earthquakes in the red circles. Just a couple small ones, very, very small. I'm wondering if they're even going to show up on the uh, seismographs here. Uh, we will see. Whoa. Okay, so, for, so that's from just the last hour. Let's go back to the previous day and take a look at the uh, movement that's taking place up there kind of slow sometimes this the uh, pns in network is kind of kind of sketchy so yeah a couple small microquakes taking place there it looks like um you know no major seismic activity but definitely some microquake activity that's uh showing up on the seismograph station that's not being reported but yeah looking at all these little seismic uh signatures there indicating microquakes even those little bitty small ones these could be uh i'm not for sure how much snow cover is on mount rainier right now but uh um it could be ice quakes who knows have to check that out pretty soon uh, in fact i may jump on that and uh, jump on a trip real soon up there uh yakima what do we got going on out there east a little small quake a really small 0.6 way out there <clears throat> um down in texas what's going on down in texas right tornadoes thunderstorms and earthquakes who would have thought out here around pecos texas again west of pecos texas region by about 30 miles or so out there uh rustler hills this one's a 3.0 kind of a little bit on the larger size compared to the activity we've seen over the past uh, week or so, this is the last week of 2.5 and above. We did see a 3.1 and a 3.0, but most of them, most of them have stayed below the 3.0 uh, magnitude level. And of course, uh, there was many more out there besides uh, 2.5 and above. And this map here, we're looking at about 53 earthquakes over the last week uh, in the Texas earth in the uh, Texas earthquake country. There we go, Texas uh, earthquake swarm here. Actually, a little bit more, 64, if you want to back out a little bit. Most of these quakes here ranging uh, right around that 6-kilometer threshold. 
not too concerned about it at the moment. Just kind of keep an eye on that. Of course, any seismic activity could lead to potentially something bigger. Kind of have to keep an eye on that. Uh, Louisiana earthquake activity in Louisiana. No more earthquakes there in the uh, the natural ga or the uh, gas and oil field fields there. They did have that 3.1 that occurred. Um, oh, yesterday we did cover that in the update uh, video. Oklahoma still seeing some movement up there, but overall pretty quiet activity. U.S. Uh, as far as the U.S. goes, South America pretty quiet as well. Only a little 4.4 in Chile. 43 kilometers inland in Puerto Rico even calming down there not a whole lot of movement lately um, normally we'll see a pretty good handful of quakes only five earthquakes there in the uh, 2.0 range in the Puerto Rico area uh, what else we got here folks 5.3 5.3 did that just kick up or was that there I'm starting to see a whole bunch of red circles that weren't there before <laughs> Of course, I don't have my Earthquake 3D bell on uh, to know if those were new quakes or not. Um, I don't. I believe it happened prior to that 2.9 in Alaska, but it is within the last hour. You can see the red circle, 5.3 there, and also 5.0. Hawaii, we'll go ahead and cover that real quick. Not a whole lot of significant movement. Still seeing that activity in the Mono Loa region. Watching that movement as well. The swarm has kind of died out, off a little bit there, west of the uh, Mono Loa Caldera area. That's this region right here. Only about four earthquakes uh, today to register on that uh, map. Uh, what else we got, folks? Uh, let's check the trimmer map real quick. Move over to the PNSN network once again, 416. Kind of similar to what we've seen yesterday along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, just pretty good handful of trimmer in the central part of the, of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, the, the slippage area. 244 epicenters on this map today. Yellowstone National Park, I don't believe we've seen any further movement there. Things have been pretty quiet there. I'm really surprised. I mean, we haven't seen any major swarms, any any moderate swarms at that either. Just been uh, just been all too quiet there at Yellowstone for now. Uh, solar weather. That's kind of the big topic at the moment. Uh, we're looking at some potential swarming tonight. Uh, storming, I should say. Did I say swarming? Storming. Looks like uh, we already get that got that KP index up there, close to the uh, uh, at least the KP index of five. Um, and it looks like it may be dying down a little bit. There is still significant uh, possibility for some auroras showing up tonight and tomorrow night. 25% chance at the mid latitudes. Higher latitudes, of course, have an excellent chance of seeing that. The Aurora Borealis uh, forecasting model shows the significant uh, um, s storming going on right now. Of course, the yellow areas up here in uh, parts of Canada seeing a uh, 50% chance of seeing that Aurora Borealis. The uh, other models here, or at least the other um, areas in green, do have a possibility of seeing it. But uh, most likely we're looking at just to the north of the higher latitudes. Mid-latitudes, what was that? About 15% chance of, uh, of seeing that. Oh, 25%. Okay, so it's, that's actually not too bad. You may want to get out there. Keep an eye on this uh, Aurora forecast that updates uh, pretty much every minute here uh, for the next 24 hours or so. They got it set at storms. Um, and what do they got here? Geomagnetic field reached uh, G1 this uh, period under. Active conditions expected on 18th through the 19th of April due to negative polarity. Um, and of course, that's all coming from a uh, coronal hole that is uh, probably facing us now, by now. Oh yeah, that's going to be this area to the southern area of the uh, of the sun's surface right there. Pretty much uh, going to hit us to the south, but still creating some uh, um, storming there. A couple of solar flares popping up. I don't believe we're any uh, uh, seeing any significant flaring with that solar flare or solar uh, solar activity uptick. Looks like a 25% chance of a sea flare from, uh, from the sunspot there on the globe 
of the uh, of the sun. Yeah, so hopefully she'll wake up pretty soon, right? I keep saying that. I'm hoping uh, hoping the sun does. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Um, let's see if space weather has anything on this geomagnetic storm. Uh, they got pretty much about the same thing. These guys cover pretty much everything that the uh, solar ham network covers. But they provide lots of links to other stuff like uh, near-Earth asteroids. I don't see anything that's concerning at the moment. Um, of course, you never know, right? This is just what this is just what they're telling us. Who knows exactly what they're not telling us? And uh, you know, maybe that's why maybe that's why they're giving away free money. You know, all these stimulus checks are thrown out like like hotcakes. Who knows what's coming? We just don't know. Anyway, this uh, site spaceweather.com has a tremendous amount of links to uh, some val valuable resource, uh, resources out there. Lots of information uh, to uh, various sites. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think that's about it. Um, not a whole lot going on here in my neck of the woods. Just uh, going to enjoy a, a beautiful Friday evening here in California. And uh, see what uh, see what the night has in store. You can see all that earthquake activity ramping up over here, folks. Like I mentioned, that's kind of out of the 24-hour period. There we go. That's about 24 hours right there. But uh, overall, I mean, we're we're looking at a die down of activity along the eastern Pacific. I mean, it's it's possible we could see a halt over here to the west, and then a re-uptick of activity in California. Just something we have to watch. Um, I think that may happen soon due to the lack of uh, uh, larger magnitude quakes over here. Just we haven't seen any type of major release up here to the north in quite some time. So still kind of watching this area. Even, we, even though we see a couple fours and fives, uh, it's something to watch in this area right here for, <clears throat> for larger scale movement. Pretty soon. Got to be pretty soon. All right, guys, have a good Friday night. Stay safe out there if you are out there enjoying the... Uh, you know, the finer, finer times in life, but uh, do it safely. And we will talk at you guys a little bit later. Please stay safe.